Thanks, George. G'day, Carl. Uh, hey, Carl. I wanted to ask, first of all, about the, the news you guys have announced today, the, the Pride game. Tell me about it, why it's so important for the club and why you've decided to uh, lock in that double header at the end of the month. Yeah, look, it's important that we're an inclusive club and to to get the, um, I suppose, make it more aware that um, it's a, a great place to come and, and watch, um, you know, football and that everyone, no matter where you come from, that you feel you can be safe coming to Coopers and, and watching Adelaide United, not just the men and the women as, as well. So it's, you know, just an opportunity for, again, for the club to be very inclusive and, you know, and reflects our values and our culture that we sort of promote in the club. Can you speak on how, as a, as a football club, when you sign up to, to play football, this is the sort of last thing that's, that's in your mind, but when you're in there, you sort of realise the, I don't know, I suppose the power, the reach that, that footballers um, have. Can you, can you speak on that and how that helps with an issue like this? Yeah, most definitely. As you said, um, you know, we can use... Um, the club and and the and the teams as as a vehicle to deliver this um, this important message out there um, that it's everyone should be safe who they are and and be be free to um, to come and support and and in, enjoy coming to watch football. And on Josh individually, what does it mean for him? To yeah, have look, the club support him in this way. Yeah, look, Josh has had our full support you know, from day one when he first came to the club and. And, you know, I suppose he's, you know, taken a huge risk in what he's done and, and the support that he's received, not just from the club, but from, you know, the general public has been tremendous. And, you know, the more, um, I suppose, of a message that we can get out there that um, everyone should be able to be safe to be who they are, it's, um, you know, a very important message. Uh, but I'll just ask one on football before everyone else can take over that. The, the away factor, the being away, you haven't been home in... What three, four, five days now? What's that? What's that like? Uh, yeah, look, how have you all handled it? Yeah, it's it's always good when you can get the team away for a few days, away from a lot of the you know outside noise, so we can really have a good focus. So, um, you know, yesterday was a good day. Yesterday with the playing group, we you know went through the last game a lot more in a lot more detail than what we normally would do because we have the time um, here with the players. So it's um, it's very good, you know. The more time you can, get, you can get the players into environments like this. The more time you can um, give information to them. Um, yeah. So the boys have, you know, we've got a great bunch of boys. You know, they take their card games very serious, and it's uh, it's good to, you know, just to have that different, um, I suppose, relationships than just coming to training and going home. Thanks, Carl. Happy to pass it on. So, Anna, do you want to kick off as well? Oh, no worries. Hi, Carl. Um, Hello. Well, um, they've been pretty uh, dramatic and fiery games, your last couple against um, Melbourne City. I mean, they're on a, a little, they found a little bit of a purple patch now. What do you expect from this one? Is it, is it the same again? Yeah, look, they've a, a very, got a very quality side there and they play a good brand of football. And, you know, as you said, the games that we've had so far this season have been... Um, Great games to watch, you know, especially for the neutral players, people, um, and I don't expect anything to be different, you know, but it'd be both teams that will go out there and, and try to have a, a big influence in the game and play their brand of football. You know, we're both teams that play quite an open brand of football, um, very, I suppose, attacking high speed in their games. So it's, yeah, it's, um, they're good games to, to be involved as a coach because it uh, really, um, you know, challenges you your um, thought processes as a coach. And we've obviously seen um, Matt Lecky really hit his straps and he hadn't sort of hit form too much the last couple of times he played. It seems like they're starting to really click. Uh, I mean, how do you handle that sort of real threat up forward from them? Yeah, look, they've, you know, we've said from, you know, day one when they signed the, the front three that they've got and then you've, you know, you've got the other midfielders that are joining um from deep to get goals as well. So um, they've got a lot of quality there um, and it's about um, us trying to restrict their supply there. Um, but, you know, uh, as you said, you know, we've had some great games so far and, you know, we hope that we can, you know, come here and, and take some points um, home with us. 
just uh, just fitness wise, um, anyone unavailable or anyone you you're getting back or getting a couple, bit few more minutes into a couple of those newer guys? Yeah, look, it, it's a, it's a balancing act. Um, it's a, a you know a short turnaround. Um, so we'll have a look at the squad. As I said, we've had a lot of time with the players here in um, in Melbourne, so they've had a lot more massage and a lot more um, recovery. So we'll see. Um, you know, I haven't made my mind up yet on who's going to play, um, but um, at this stage, we've still got pretty much got everyone available. Thanks, so Pat. Thanks, Anna. Um, I'll just go over to to Marco. Are you there, Marco? Yeah. Um... Simon, I am. Good day, Carl. Mate, what's the what's the latest with um, with Stefan Moore? Um, as far as I know, um, we'll have him to the end of the month. Um, so that's another, you know, I think that's another three games. So um, yeah, look, Steph is, you know, it's. I suppose it's been a little bit difficult on him. It's, you know, he keeps thinking this is going to be his last game, last game. So it's been a little bit difficult on him, but um, I've. I believe now we've um, agreed to the end of the month. So, um, yeah, we're, you know, I suppose very fortunate that the club in Japan are allowing Steph to stay and play and keep his fitness up. I mean, what are you, what are you made of the Reds' recent form? You know, draws, wins, losses. You're striving for a bit of sort of sort of consistency. You know, I guess now we're, well, you played 12 games almost halfway through the sort of, sort of camp, um, through the campaign. How important is it to get it? to get a bit of a run of, uh, you know, results? Yeah, it's very important. Um, you know, I think we've, I suppose, had a few, quite a few changes so far through in the team over the course of the season so far. So we've, we're still finding our feet a little bit, trying to get that um, right balance and have that cohesion in the team, um, you know, and, and I suppose the thing that's letting us down at the moment is we're just starting a little bit too slow in games. Um, we're finishing games very well. You know, we, you can see that um, we've scored a lot of goals in the last you know 15 minutes of game. So we're finishing games very well. And we, but unfortunately, we're just making it very difficult for us the way that we're starting. So, so tomorrow night we'll have a you know a real good focus on not um, giving, getting off to a slow start and giving something away early, and then it makes it a little bit t tougher for us. So if we can. Um, stay in the game and you know even take a lead it then you know it can be a little bit different for us. And mate are you guys staying away for the MacArthur game as well or going home and then going back? No we'll go home after the Melbourne City game and then travel back up to Sydney on on Friday so um, it would have been nice to have stayed away but um, you know uh, it will also be good to, to get home and see the family. Thanks mate. Thanks, Marco. We'll just pass over to Robbie at seven. Robbie, you there, mate? All good. I will um, might circle back to Robbie. Uh, then we'll go Christian. Christian, are you there? Do you want to ask some questions, mate? Yeah, sure. Um, Carl, I was just wondering if Zach Clough would be in line uh, to make a starting debut uh, tomorrow. And just on Stefan, are you worried at all that um, by him remaining at the club, it might be limiting uh, opportunities for um, Zach to maybe get more minutes or other players who could potentially play in that 10 role? No, not at all. Um, um, having Steph here longer, it gives us more time to work with Zach for him then to to find his feet in the team and, and find understand the way that we want to play and, and the, what we want, are looking for, for him. Um, you know, I think you saw and that small um, cameo that he had the other night, how the quality that he's got. So, um, yeah, look, he's certainly going to add some extra um, quality in that front third that we, we need. Um, but um, having Steph here a little bit longer, it just gives us a little bit more time to, to bet him into the team and not have to um, throw, him, throw him in too early. Sorry, Jordan, I'm here now. I just got one question. No worries, Robbie. Go for it, mate. Hey, Scruff. Um, just one from me. You, the finishing has been an issue, uh, not just this season, but last season as well, as frustrating that must be for you. What do you put it down to? Is it just purely poor execution, or are you more unhappy with the decisions on when to shoot and when not to shoot? Look, it's a bit of both. Um, and that's, you know, why strikers get paid the most money. Um, they're the ones that, um, you know, under pressure, they have to stand up and, 
and as you say, it's about the execution. It's also about decision making as well. And um, you know, it's something that we just keep working on. We do a lot of finishing, a lot of crossing at training, and it's just a matter of um, getting the players where they don't have to think about it too much. It just becomes instinct. Um, so you know, we'll keep working. Um, it, it's important that we, we're getting the opportunities. I think the other night we had 37 crosses in the game, which was a high number, um, but unfortunately um, the quality just wasn't quite there. And it's something that we've discussed with the players and hopefully um, tomorrow night we improve in that area. And sorry, I do have another one. The foreign boys, um, I think, other than Zach, are all 34 plus, three games in, three day, uh, in a week and, and travel. Are they the ones that you're looking closely at maybe giving a rest? Um, look, um, you know, we'll see how they go. As you said, they've, we've had, been fortunate enough to have a little bit more recovery time here in Melbourne. You know, they've had a few more massages and a bit more time in the pool. So um, we'll give them, um, you know, every, every minute that we can um, because, they, you know, they're an important part of our team um, and we want to win the game on, tomorrow night. You know, we'll take one game at a time. Thanks, bud. Christian, did you have any more, mate, while you were there? Yep, all good. Yep. Um, so then I'll go to uh, nine, channel nine. Not sure. It's Ren. Thanks, Jordan. Um, yeah, uh, Carl, it's Tommy Wren. Thanks so much. Um, uh, just Bernardo, the equaliser, fantastic by him. 90 second minutes, sort of been building and showing a little bit. How impressed were you with what he was able to do and how much confidence does that give him to you know, continue to take that next step, I suppose? Yeah, it'll give him a tremendous lot of confidence to getting your first goal. Um, you know, it's something that we've been working with Bernardo, um, making sure that he gets inside the back post. A lot of the times when we are attacking, he sort of stands out a little bit. So he's taken that on board and it's just now a matter of hopefully that gives him a bit more confidence to, to shoot a bit more. We try to encourage him to, to shoot more because he has a quality on both sides. So um, hopefully he takes that into the game on Tuesday night. And just one more on him, probably hard to say, but only 17, I guess, you know, the sky's the limit for a player of that age and, and potential. Yeah, most definitely. Look, there's no secret. There's players that can dribble the ball and run at players. You know, they're, they're the ones that are, um, especially in modern football now, where the you know teams are so well organised, you need players that can um, beat players in 1v1 areas. And, you know, that's what Bernardo's strength. So he can go on to, you know, very big things, um, and he has a level head on his on his shoulders. So you know we expect um, Bernardo to keep improving this year, and hopefully um, you know stay with the club next year again, and and then move on to a big club after that.